Uh, Jim Winston here at uh, DB Fine Wines in New Canaan, and we are looking at Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving wines. And there is no doubt that Thanksgiving uh, is the biggest wine day of the year, and there isn't even a second place. There is such an amazing amount of the food on the table and the diversity of foods. There's turkey, there's gravy, there's different types of stuffings, candied yams, garlic mashed potatoes, creamed onions, green bean casserole, goes on and on and on. And there's always something else that comes from our uh, particular heritage, perhaps it's a, uh, a, a country or an interest or a area of the country, or maybe, just maybe uh, you are Italian, or maybe you're married into it, or maybe you're just lucky enough to be able to go over to someone's house who is Italian. Uh, and I can speak from experience. My brother married into an Italian family, and when it came time to join families for Thanksgiving, it was amazing. <laughs> and it starts with an antipasto, this wonderful artichoke that had uh, been braised in garlic and oil, sinful. Uh, and then the gravy with the meatballs and sausages, and then the pasta, and then the turkey comes out. It was just, you know, as close as you can get uh, to having uh, dinner at Hampton Court uh, during the time of Henry VIII. It was just this amazing array of foods. And there is no one wine that works. That's, that's the point. No one wine that works. Now, my approach for years uh, for Thanksgiving sort of divides it down into, into sort of like segments. There's a hospitality wine that you serve at the start when people come. Um, before you actually sit down, you're watching the game. Uh, then you have uh, informal red. Uh, it's something like maybe a Beaujolais uh, uh, would work. Or then uh, you then have a very, very special showpiece wine, which for me would be red burgundy or Pinot Noir. A showpiece white wine, uh, which would be, again, white burgundy this time, or Chardonnay. And then a pungent white wine, uh, which would be Riesling or Gewürztraminer. And then maybe another white wine, and then a dessert wine. So there you have this amazing uh, uh, this diversity, variety of wines to match all the various foods and tastes and savories and cranberry sauce and everything else that goes on to onto that table. So we'll begin. This is Sangueti Giuda. It is a wine from Lombardy and it has a light bubble. It has the alcohol content of about a beer, five degrees, and it's slightly sweet. Uh, not only is it fun to enjoy on its own merit, it's a great wine to have on hand for Fred and Naomi. And who is that? Fred and Naomi are these people, the relations, older aunts, uncles, whatever. But they come in and they really don't like wine, and they don't like booze or anything. Uh, and they are going to be your biggest problem. Uh, because what they are going to do is want to take your favorite red wine and add ginger ale and ice to it to make it more acceptable. Well, here it is. You can serve this to Fred and Naomi and they will kiss your toes. It's a great wine. Now, in terms of the informal reds, these wines can be served chilled. And each of the wines I'm showing you here are not only good chilled, but they're good on their own merit, just to have, again, uh, before you actually sit down but it would certainly transition well to the table. Charmeur Rosé, uh, Chateau Saint-Croix from Provence. This wine is, is really, really interesting. Uh, saint Uh the wine is a blend of Gamay and Pinot Noir, and I love the wine. Uh, I uh, presented the wine at a Bastille Day tasting, and I think the wine is just terrific. It's medium bodied, it's lighter, it's easy to drink, no hard edges. This wine, uh, I just learned about, just tasted it. I hosted a tasting on wines from Spain, and the wine blew me away. Uh, it, it's a wine from La Mancha. Uh, it's Lunera from, uh, from <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, from Dehesa de Luna, and it is a blend of Syrah and Tempranillo. And I thought the wine was so great, I said, oh my gosh, this is going into my, my Thanksgiving lineup. We then move into the showpiece reds. The showpiece reds are Pinot Noir. Uh, and I have an example here, both from Sonoma and also from the Cote de Bone Burgundy. This is uh, Vista. Uh, it comes from a single vineyard. It's a reserve uh, from Petaluma's Gap. 
and the wine is wonderful, wonderful layering, uh, and that's coming from a person who prefers actually red burgundy. Uh, this is a new wine, new domain for me, and it's Pomard. Pomard is the northernmost portion of the of the Cote de Bone, uh, just below where we go into the more more uh, the larger scaled uh, uh, 